Hello everyone, it's Carrie. I hope you're having a wonderful holiday season. Today I'm working on an Ever After High doll and making her into Alice from the Alice in Wonderland, the 2010 movie version where she's wearing her red cord dress. This was a commission. The customer later also wanted the blue dress, so at the end of the video you'll see some pictures of both of the costumes as well as a little stuffed rabbit that I made for her. The construction of the dresses were was very uh, difficult and a little tedious, so when it's that level of di difficulty, I like to just concentrate on the work and I don't always record, but I did show a little bit of the process of putting together the red dress near the end of the video, so you'll see kind of the basic uh, construction. So as usual, I started out with a few coats of Mr. Super Clear, and I've started giving her some highlights already at this point with some uh, pastel in white on her cheeks and forehead and nose. I'm using some reference photos of the actor uh, who played Alice. Her name is M Mia uh, Wasik. Kowska, I think I'm totally butchering that name <laughs> I don't know how to pronounce it I'm sorry but a uh, beautiful actor who plays this part and I'm trying to just capture the eye shape and you know of course when the head is much larger than the actual person it's not going to look exactly like them I just I'm really uh, trying to get a surreal version of the the actress who played the character So if you've watched my videos for a while, you know that I'd like to use these little brushes. These are like little round brushes that have gotten old over the years and I'll cut them down to sort of a stencil brush size so I can dot in these little areas. And so I'm using some pastel and like some terracotta and different colors of red to capture the sort of ruby lips. I'm using a Crimson Lake Derwent watercolor pencil, I believe that's what color I'm using here, to add in some line detail and shape the lips a little bit better. Now I'm taking my favorite black Faber-Castell art grip to do some very fine lines at the corners of the mouth and sort of carry those over to the center of the mouth. If you're a supporter over on Patreon, there is a video in the uh, reward library where I show how I do lips. And I just continue to add more highlights. The character in a lot of the reference photos had a, more of a pale skin, so I'm just trying to maintain that those highlights in those areas to keep the skin looking a little paler than the actual vinyl of this doll. Now I'm adding some shading to the philtrum and nose area. I usually use a mixture of the pan pastel terracotta with some like peach and pale, uh, very light skin tones. The supplies I use are in the description box below. There's a link. I've started adding my supplies to my Amazon storefront so you can see there what supplies I use as well as some notes on how I use the supplies and that's the link to that is in the description box below. If you do make any purchases from that area you'll I'll get a small commission so that's appreciated. Thank you. Still maintaining those highlights and blending out the uh, blush. And once again, if you're a supporter over on Patreon, this month's game changer, or I'm sorry, close-up clip will be a little step-by-step -step on how I 
correct over blushing or shading errors. So using a white Derwent watercolor pencil, I'm adding some highlights to the upper lip and around the eyes. So I think I recorded this one before I started doing some uh, different camera angles, so I'm sorry there's not any changes in this one, but going forward when recording some of the face-ups I've been doing more recently, I'm giving you guys some more camera angles so you can see some of the work at different views. So thank you guys for that feedback. So I'm blending a few colors in the eye, just using various shades, and blending those out with white. trying to be very precise with all of the lines and all of the little details because the character in the movie didn't have like any eye makeup on it was very natural look so I wanted to make sure that the lines and details that were there were quite uh, purposeful and precise because uh, a lot of times you can fix mistakes with doing some like sort of smoky eyed or something can really uh, m fix some of your mistakes but she's a very natural uh, has a very natural look so it's much better to just take my time and focus on getting all those little details right So afterwards I gave her several coats of Mr. Super Clear to finish and then some Liquitex high gloss varnish on the eyes and some adhered some eyelashes. So here will be just a little bit, like I said, of construction of the costume. I used some sheer fabric and added some ribbon and embellishments that I later went back and painted. And then different, or, and, and some red tulle for the skirt. So I had to hand paint a lot of the detail, but here's the base dress. And then I added the details onto the dress. So that's the basics. Uh, I'm, I, again, I apologize that I didn't walk through the entire construction. It was kind of something I was winging it, and it's, uh, it was quite difficult to do. So like I said earlier, I just kind of like to do that on my own. But there's the final dress look, and I'm very proud of it. I was really happy with how this one turned out. So if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. I'll do my best to answer all of them. And I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, I'd love it if you gave it a thumbs up and subscribed if you haven't already. 
stay tuned for in a moment for the rest of the photos of the uh, red dress and the blue dress as well. I hope you have a wonderful holiday season and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.